This is your captain. Please keep your seatbelts on. We will land in Calgary in a few moments. The year is 2010, and this is Calgary, in the province of Alberta, the center of Canada's oil industry. Like the rest of Canada, it is stone cold in winter, and the entire city is engulfed by snow. On board a plane from the United States is Charles, a new immigrant originally from Ghana. Canada is going to be a new home for Charles. Charles is only one of thousands of Ghanaians who are attracted to Canada as a result of its generous immigration policy. Ghana, your beloved country, is free forever. Ghana is one of the first countries in Africa to establish diplomatic relations and development cooperation with Canada shortly after the country's independence in 1957 and later as a republic in 1960. As a result, Ghanaians, many of them professionals and students, have been arriving in Calgary and other parts of Canada for many decades. On the phone line to Toronto, Ghana's High Commissioner to Canada, Joseph Ayikwe Otu, explains that Canada is home to tens of thousands of Ghanaians. Many Ghanaians were able to move in to come and live in, in Canada and it is estimated that 80 to about 100,000 Ghanaians who are all based in Toronto. In the other provinces, Montreal comes second as one of the uh, areas that is uh, hugely populated by Ghanaians. And then you have like Montreal, Calgary, Winnipeg, Manitoba. Canada's hospitality and the economic opportunities it presents, however, does not automatically make life easy for Ghanaian immigrants who have a deep-seated need to stay connected to their way of life, their culture and heritage. Oh my goodness, it was so cold. I couldn't believe it was colder outdoors than in the fridge or the freezer. And one other thing I found shocking was I didn't see anybody like me on the streets. So when you come into the system, you need to find a job. And if you don't find a job in your profession, you just find whatever you have to find so that you can make a living and look up to your family. It was a real struggle to get to know Ghanaians here. Uh, you know, when you travel, you want to meet Ghanaians. It took not less than six months before I met Ghanaians in the community. I had to start from somewhere. You know, as I used to work in a bakery. That's for the first thing, because I need to provide for my family. And I remember one, one day I came out after doing overtime, I was so tired. I came out of the building and then I took about four steps and boom, I was on the ground. <laughs> I slipped <laughs> and fell. And I said, I was looking around to see if somebody was around to pick me up. And there was nobody, so I had to gather myself <laughs> and get up. These Ghanaians also have complimentary words about Canadians, describing them as incredibly generous people. The generosity is beyond our description. They are very, Canadians are very generous. These people are so generous. You will never get that in England. I find the people very nice. Um, culturally, I find Canadians really nice. Because I've been to parts of Europe and they were not as nice as Canadians. They always offered a hand or said hi when we were walking. Very warm people, very friendly people. And, um, you know, I decided to stay after, after school, so that tells you I love the city. This documentary is about Ghanaians who arrived in Canada and made their home in Calgary, became Canadian citizens and assumed a proud and unique identity. 
This is about Ghanaian Canadians in Calgary with a renewed identity for development under the umbrella of GCAC, the Ghanaian Canadian Association of Calgary. GCAC brings Ghanaians together in Calgary to promote their culture and heritage. The association also engages the youth as partners for development while harnessing their Ghanaian heritage to become influential Calgarians. New Ghanaian immigrants who arrive in Calgary now have access to an influential and helpful association to help them settle. But this was not always the case. Amashini is 80 years old and she is one of the first Ghanaians to arrive in Calgary in the 1970s together with her British husband and renowned archaeologist, Professor Peter Shini. They spent decades in Calgary and Amma has vivid memories of how she and her husband assisted Ghanaian university students in Calgary during the 1970s, long before the formation of GCAC, the Ghanaian Canadian Association of Calgary. Peter Shini, my husband, was great. He looks after everyone. If you are in trouble with immigration, if anybody is doing something in the government, you just come and tell him, and then he will go for it. And he always successful at the university. If your supervisor is doing something you don't like and so you tell him, he will fix it. You go direct to the president or to the dean. Say, look, this is an African. This is what, and because he knew the tradition and everything, so he always there for the African, you know, group. Amashini took this photo of Alex Abankwa when he visited Calgary in 1980. Alex Abankwa at the time served as the Ghanaian High Commissioner to Canada. The current Ghana High Commissioner to Canada, Joseph Ayikwe Otu, also visited Calgary in the summer of 2018. The few Ghanaians who lived in Calgary in the 1970s discovered one another over time and started meeting regularly in each other's home, mostly on social occasions and also to mark events such as Ghana's independence and Republic Days. As time passed, many of the Ghanaians became Canadian citizens. In spite of this, the urge to form and register an association became a growing need as new Ghanaians arrived in Calgary and relived the disorienting experience of being away from their original home. Discussions for forming the Ghanaian Canadian Association of Calgary started among the core body of Ghanaians at the time, including Mrs. Shaney and her husband Peter, Mr. Kwansa, Mr. Chumesi, Mr. Agri, dentists Dr. Simon Tewia, Dr. Matthew Boedi, Dr. Ni Ayi, and later Dr. Kofi Fofi. The number of Ghanaians kept growing with notable additions, including Mr. Eric Jemfi, Dr. Lutrot, Mr. Achi Adams, Mr. Dacosta Mensa, Mr. Sam Saba. Mrs. Linda Ankedrin and others. Social gatherings of these Ghanaians continued, including meetings for funerals. And so when Mr. Ben Asari lost his mother, Ghanaians in Calgary gathered to help during the grieving process. 
This particular funeral was the last boost the community needed to finally form the Ghanaian Canadian Association of Calgary. The website of the association also records that the first meeting was held at the home of Dr. and Mrs. Matthew Buedi. The Alberta provincial government record shows that the Ghanaian Canadian Association of Calgary was fully incorporated on 13th June 1980. Since its formation, successive leadership of the association have built it from strength to strength. Margaret Edu is an accomplished business owner in Calgary and has been recognized as a compelling Calgarian by the Calgary Herald newspaper. Margaret also once served as president of GCAC and her passion for Ghanaian culture and heritage is infectious. She sees GTAC as the tool to help Ghanaians, both young and old, to keep a strong identity. GCAC is a platform, honestly, for our community, basically, and its its role is diverse in the form in the form of education, you know, heritage, our culture, being there for each other and coming together. We need that foundation, that platform for generations to come, you know, to educate generations to come. And that's what I think this platform is for. It is very relevant in our community. We need to know where we came from. Shetin Adams is the youth coordinator of GCAC. She became fully involved in the association after what she describes as an awakening. High school was when I realized that I wanted to embrace um, being Ghanaian fully. And I was usually the only like black girl, only African, um, only, like I was the only like a lot of things in a lot of my classrooms and social settings and things like that. So um, it was hard, I think at first, because there's a tendency to be kind of like ashamed of your culture if it's different or be ashamed of your family if they're kind of like not just like everybody else around you. But the older you get, I think the more you appreciate the differences because you start noticing that the way that you were brought up probably prepared you for a lot of things that like the standard Canadian, there's no standard Canadian, but like that white Canadians like probably couldn't really relate to or didn't, weren't like really taught. I, it took me a long time to appreciate it, but the older I got, the easier it became. And also like making friends who kind of had the same background as I did. Yeah, I think the Ghanaian community is among one of the most well-established communities in Calgary. Um, we've done a really, really good job, I think creating like a good legacy for the youth and for Ghanaians that come after us. No doubt, young members of GCAC, such as Shetin Adams, have learned from Margaret Edu. Be you. Have your kinky hair, be proud of your, your achievements, be proud of your education. Don't be like anybody else. Because when you hold on to you and you love you, you can do a lot. The GCAC endeavors to sustain various links with Ghana through visiting programs. Here, representatives of Ghana Police Service and Immigration came to visit Calgary and interacted with members of the association. Anthony Manful is a former president of GCAC, and he says, whereas the association has made significant progress in staying together, the path has not always been easy. How can we make sure the association is working? We should come together and help others. You know, there are so many vulnerable people out there. For instance, uh, you go to somebody's house, and I used to do that. I used to go to family's house, and then you see the kids, the, both families are working. They are not there to supervise the kid, to even do his or her homework. So how can the person get a good grade out of grade 12 and continue education? No, it's not there. And we don't want that. We want them to continue after high school. We want them to grab the, so many opportunities here. And that is something on my heart to ensure that 
our kids don't just end up be, become a, a fall a drop out from the, on the treadmill no we want to ensure that the kids are well stabilized well grounded here and they have good professions they have good marriages they have good future and then with that we can then pass on the mantle to them Dr. David Boydi is also another former president of Ghanaian Canadian Association of Calgary. He said his tenure afforded him the opportunity to identify some ways to assist members of the Ghanaian Canadian Association to make progress in their lives. The first thing I thought was the struggle to be economically free. That was not given us the freedom to be who we were. In this western financial system there were certain basic things if you owned a home and compared to if you were renting and i did that analysis and especially in calgary it was such that even if you were living in government house the amount you pay was just you paid was just a little bit less than the amount you paid when you were renting secondly if you looked at someone owning a home and looking at the mortgage they paid, that was just a difference of about $200 between a two-bedroom house mortgage and renting a two-bedroom house. So, I then got some of the young executives, Geoffrey Pond, we had her multiple, there were two of them, and who I depended on. So, uh, if we could get 50% even of the population, the family population, to own their own homes, we will start settling down in a fair mind rather than have the world thought of, oh, I'll be going home, so I'm not going to uh, buy a home and that kind of stuff. And so I remember that towards the end, at least uh, the last two years before the end of my presidency, I could see that, oh, yes, the Ghanaian community was better. We, we had about, I would say, 75% of the families in the community own their own homes. Dr. Boydi says the need to develop and assist one another is a continuous effort and that he is happy to provide benefits of his experience to GCAC through the new leaders. Charles Odami Ankara, the current president of the Ghanaian Canadian Association of Calgary is a beneficiary of the experience and efforts of past leaders and is determined to carry the dream forward. The future of the GCAC is great. I see a future where my children, your children, and our children's children, our grandchildren, will have a sense of heritage and a sense of belonging. You know, I am very passionate about this and I always uh, talk to people that we, the first generation immigrants, have a very strong connection to Ghana. Our classmates, our family, everyone is there, but the children we're giving birth to here have that heritage as Ghanaians still in them. Generations upon generations will pass and go. They will still identify as Ghanaians. So the future of the GCUC is to build an environment of belonging, a cohesive environment, close-knit community, where our children, our grandchildren, will find a place to call home in the sense of identifying with their heritage. You know, it's very important to have an identity, to know where you belong, to know another person who has the same identity as yours. So that is the future I see, and that is what I'm very passionate about, that we'll, we'll build a platform today for the future generations to take off and even make it bigger. We have left everything that we had behind. We left friends, family, uh, you know, siblings, moms and dads, brothers. Like, we left everything home to come here to build new friendship, to build new families here. So most of the time, we miss home. At the same time, we are building a new home. So that is a new, I call it a new identity. So we, we are struggling to create a new identity for our own selves first, then for our children. Because as we speak right now, most people who are living here in Canada are Canadians. They are Canadian citizens. 
but it's still our Ghanaians by birth. You know what I mean? So we have our own unique identity that is helping us shape the next generation. So it could, our children will not have the same attachment to Ghana as I am having now, but they will still have that connection um, to, to, to Ghana. And to me, that is very passionate. And that is something that we need to let this case embrace. That it is not that they're different. They have a new identity. And that identity is a blend of two beautiful cultures, the Canadian culture and then the Guinean culture. Dr. David Boedi was president of GCAC for many years and he remains an inspiration for the current leaders of the association. He has some solid ideas for GCAC's future. The next frontier that I believe uh, the Ghanaian community should grow is if individuals, especially we do have circles of friends all the time as, as Ghanaians, if such friends could team up and set up businesses, in that case, they will be sharing the risk of the businesses. That is something that we have never, Ghanaians as a whole, have not broken over. However, we have some seeds in there because you have individuals who have their own shops, like the Ghanaian shop, African shop, uh, individuals doing this uh, pair home things. But it's these are seeds. We are yet to move into the hair frontier. And that is what I would encourage that the community begins to do, to team up and go into investments. Because you cannot live in this Western world and think that you have it all figured out. Anthony Manfo currently serves as head of GCAC's welcoming committee. He's deeply passionate about his role and wants to pass on his experience to newcomers. We want to make it such a way that our kids are not seen as immigrants. They are seen as Canadians here. Uh, we have to train the kids such a way that they can become MLAs, they can become doctors, judges, they can become nurses, they can become carpenters, professional carpenters, they can become uh, what they need to be and not, you know, doing any odd job just to make ends, ends meet. No. Uh, we, we, we've come here sac to sacrifice for our children. And for that reason, we should make sure that we help them. We need to make sure that our children are well stabilized here. They, they become prosperous. You know, it's not just about money. It's about getting wisdom. You see, it's about getting wisdom to know how it is to live in the community. How can they be uh, beneficial? How can they be fruitful in the community that they live? And so it's my it's my uh, my desire that Ghanaians here will be you know uh, will be part of the system here. Margaret Edu also retains the love of the association as a former president. In an interview with the Calgary Herald newspaper published in January 2015, Margaret said, "Quote." I really want us to have our own little building to be called Ghana House. The dream for Ghana House, an idea born many years ago, is still alive within GCAC and its current leadership. It is part of the grand future being designed. The Ghana House is a place where we can identify as home. The Ghana House is a place where we can host language classes for our, our kids to learn our local languages. And the Ghana House is a place where we can gather and play Ludu Oware. The seniors can gather and play Ludu Oware and tell stories. The Ghana House is a place where when you're walking to, you feel like you're walking into Ghana. The Ghana House is a place where our children will walk into to learn about their heritage. As I speak to you now, the association has acquired very um, unique items from Ghana. We can't display them 
because they are all over the place. But if, if we had a Ghana house, one of the components is to build a small museum where we will keep artifacts that are very unique to Ghana. That when you go there, you'll be able to identify with them. The regions of Ghana, our culture, our food, the people, what we are doing. So the Ghana house is like recreating a small Ghana in Calgary. I'm very proud of the community's response to our demonstration. I am so proud and overwhelmed with the support we have received so far. And I want to thank everyone um, for the, their, their support. And I have to say this, even the past administration, how they have guided us and supported us to show us the way. In the most succinct way, Charles Odami Ankara, the current president of GCAC, says the future he sees for the association is one in which GCAC becomes the very best in the world. We want to ensure that the Ghanaian Association in Calgary becomes the best Ghanaian Association in the world. The Ghanaian Canadian Association of Calgary has been a long time in the making. 13th June 2020 will mark 40 long years since it was formed. If life does begin at 40, then GCAC is just starting off to realize its most ambitious dream to become the best Ghanaian association in the world. The association is gradually climbing and we need to be somewhere there. We are not there yet, but I believe God willing, we'll be there. The 40 year milestone for GCAC will truly become an opportunity for a new and refreshed identity for development. Okay.